Greetings, fellow pilgrims, on this week four of Great Lent. We pray that this video finds you well on the trail, walking with hope, sustained by the gifts that God gives in our struggles. This week we'll delve into the spiritual disciplines that will keep our feet on the path and eyes on Christ. Spiritual progress doesn't fall into our laps as much as we wish it would. I doubt anyone shows up at a trailhead and expects fellow hikers to carry her. God has given us helpful discipline so that we can grow more like him and draw nearer to him. James 4.8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. James 2.14-26 What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled. But you do not give him the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, was it not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. One of the spiritual disciplines that a lot of us try to focus on during Great Lent is almsgiving. Now that can seem like something that more is for your parents who earn probably much more than you do or for people who are better off, but almsgiving is for everyone, even the poor. And I'd like to talk today about Dobri Dobrev. He's a Bulgarian ascetic who died quite recently in 2018, on February the 13th. His story affects me deeply because it really robs me of all excuses not to give. He was um, a wonderful man who would walk, I think it was about 12 miles each day from his town to the big cathedrals in Sofia, Bulgaria, and he would beg by the front door. Every bit of money that he was given, he donated to the cathedrals, monasteries, schools. He gave everything away. And as a beggar for Christ, he was one of the biggest single donors for a lot of those institutions. He was also extremely humble. When children would come up to him, he would kiss their hands. He would bow low. You can see footage of him online, and I challenge you not to be affected by the light and radiance and joy of his gaze, of his presence. His name means beautiful, good, kind. He certainly lived up to that. Though he lived on a tiny amount of his pension in one room that was provided for him, he donated tens of thousands of dollars. He humbled himself in order to give big. I find that pretty inspiring, and I think that it's a 
a challenge or an invitation to all of us to give, even if we think we don't have much ourselves. Spiritual disciplines are something that take practice. I think hardly any of us will be really great at them right away. Whether it's prayer, almsgiving, fasting, reading the scriptures, practicing the virtues, long-suffering, patience, kindness, it all takes practice. And if your life is anything like mine, you have plenty of opportunities to practice throughout the day. Life can be pretty provoking. <laughs> so we have lots of time to practice. Just last night, my family and I went to see the movie Man of God about St. Nectarios and all that he endured with such love and kindness as people slandered him saying so many untrue and unkind things about him and his work. And he took it with humility and love and forgiveness. I think he must have practiced quite a bit to get that good. <laughs> and I think that we can look at all of our other saints for the virtues that we ourselves are lacking and ask them to help us to also attain to that level of virtue, to be healed of our passions that keep us away from that. And the spiritual disciplines, the things that we can actually set our hearts and minds and hands to, will help us so much. Heck, even asking for help in prayer is a spiritual discipline. So I challenge you to think about in what way can you make a step towards a virtue, a discipline, and what it really is, is how can you become more like Christ? He does invite us to become more like him, and the spiritual disciplines are the way to walk.